let him stay. It's a big game.
Yourself! Shit, Rob! Yourself, Rob! Yourself!
Georgetown play, you see all the
just want to miss. And you'll hear whenever number four, Mark Mariah of Clarkstown South has the ball, you'll hear a loud boo from the Clarkstown North crowd. And number 10, Dan Casey rips down the rebound. Here comes Robbie Green to direct the North offense. Arlo has it at the block. Gives it back to Green. Green hits to Casey and back out to Arlo. The ball is fumbled there by the North players and it's South ball. The North crowd is really riled up for this one. There's Mark Murray. You can hear the booing in the background. Hastings with the jump shot. It's good. Vikings lead it 4-2. And Green once again will direct the North offense. He's got quality players in Phil Stillman, Paul Scato, Casey, and Arlo as his background players. There's Arlo, he'll pump. He'll give it off, but it'll be stolen by South. And there's a layup for no two. Good defensive play on Phil Stillman, but it'll be followed up by a South player. And the Vikings now lead 6-2. Robbie Green will bring it up once again. You can tell there's a look of disgust on Paul Toscano's face. He's not happy with the Ram players right now. Now Paul Toscano Jr. has the ball, gives it to Casey for a jump shot. Casey doesn't hit it. And there's South rebound. Arlo with an aggressive defensive play. He's going to get the foul called on him. And the Ram fans don't like that one one bit. Mariah has it once again. He gives it inside, and the Vikings Oh, for another two, but it doesn't go. And the second shot doesn't go. Paul Toscano has got the rebound. Gives it to Robbie Green. And Green putting out a display of ball handling. Green gives the scanner for a jump shot. It's short. But no Rams. Mark Arlo with the rebound. To scanner with another one that goes. And the Vikings are up by only two points now. It's a low scoring first quarter with the score six four in the favor of the Ra of the Vikings with three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. There's Mariah with a jump shot, it's good. And that quiets the Ram crowd. Green and Arlo make up the backcourt for the Rams now. They've been a superior backcourt to all others this season. Rams record 13 and 4 coming in. Three losses to the Westchester teams, four losses. They also lost to what Archie Ketchum. Uh, other than that, they've lost to New Rochelle and Mount Vernon. And there's a steal by South. Here comes South on the drive. Green grabs down the garbage rebound. Green directs the offense, gives it to Scatter. Scatter, the jump shot is no good. And the Ram fans are really something tonight. I don't know any of the fans that play his name. And number four, Mark Myers is bringing the ball to South. The Ram fans are really riled up tonight. Which number is Greg Myers? Who's Greg Myers? Here comes Robbie Green once again up the court. The Rams are down by seven point, six points, ten to four. And uh, Robbie Green, I must say, is doing a terrific job of directing the Ram offense. I just think that the Viking players are really up for this. They beat Clarkstown. They beat New Rochelle Friday night. Uh, after some dispute, there's Paul Scanner with a jump shot. It doesn't go. And there's Jamie Dowd with the rebound. He gives it to a South player, number 20, who drives the lane, gives it back to Dowd. It's going to be called walking. So Robbie Green gives the ball to Mark Arlo, who's at the elbow. Gives it to Stillman. Stillman gives it to Scanner, who drives for two. It doesn't go. So Scanner gets the rebound back, and he puts it in for two points. Rams now down by just four points. Look at the half-court press they put on. It's really a spectacular defense against the inbounds pass. And they force an out-of-bounds pass by South. Rams ball. They'll have a chance to go up by just to go down by two points. A minute 18 left. When the Rams are really hot, they work great together. So for uh, the last shot here is there's no time clock, no shot clock in high school basketball. Kevin Hastings and uh, Mark Mariah just playing with the ball, having a catch. And you can hear the Ram fans booing Mariah whenever he touches the ball. There's Meyer who's got a baseline. Mariah has it back with a shot. It doesn't go with one second left. Phil Stillman fights for the rebound, and that's going to be the end of the quarter.
and the Rams are only down by four points, which I'm not really sure what uh, Coach is kind of thinking right now, as he thought as he, coming into the game that uh, I assume he thought that the Rams would be up by a good amount. They're down by four points. They didn't play the greatest first at, first quarter, so uh, he can't be too disappointed. But right now, the North fans are trying to rally them on, but the South fans are really putting on a terrible display of rudeness. What is the sixth Ram? I'm part of it. Uh, we've got a lot of guys. You really can't specify anybody, but there are a lot of fans who follow the Rams from place to place. We follow them to New Rochelle, Mount Vernon, and we're here at South, which is really no big deal. It's just about 10 minutes down the road from us. Robert Green is going to direct the Rams once again. 10 seconds into the second quarter, the Rams are down by four. Green really yelling. He's barking out some signals out there on the court. Green drives the lane, gives it to Arlo. Arlo back to Green. Green pumps a jump shot, and he's not going to shoot. He gives it to Arlo, gets the scatter for a shot. No, it doesn't go. The North players just don't have, seem to have anything going. This is a beautiful pass by Green into Casey, who gives it out to Arlo. Arlo with a jump shot. Oh, it's no good, which is unusual. Arlo is usually goals from outside. He's looking for someone to pass it to. The Ram players are playing tough D now. This could be a resurgence by the Rams. Rams are playing really tough D. The Ryan with a jump shot, it's good. And that quiets the Ram crowd. And Coach Paul Toscano calls a timeout, and the Rams are down by eight points. He's not happy at all. is his first playing time of the night for the Rams. I really think that's long overdue. It's still someone really can't handle the uh, crowd alone. There's that case with a long jumper. It doesn't go. Green gets the rebound, though. He gives it to Arlo, who jump shot. It's good. And Mark Arlo has really been ice for the Rams this season. He's averaging somewhere around 10 or 11 points. He's been playing really well for Coach Paul Toscano. You see Mark Orlo giving Robbie Green all the confidence in the world. Orlo and Green really communicate well together. They're great friends in school, and they really know what they're doing out there together. Green looking for Casey inside. He doesn't get him. He gives to Casey outside now to Stillman. Stillman takes an outside jumper. It's no good. Stillman, which is an unusual shot. He usually doesn't shoot from the outside. Uh, I don't think Paul Scatter would like him to do that. But he took that shot, and it was no good. Here comes Mark Mariah, drives the lane, gives it outside to number five, Greg Meyer, who shoots a jump shot, it's good for two points. So the Rams now down by 10 points. Must make something of these next few minutes. There's only four left in the first half. Casey has it outside, gives it back to Green with a jump shot from the top of the key. It's swish. That was all met by Robbie Green. Green doesn't shoot frequently, but when he does, watch out because he's all met a lot of the time. There's Mariah, and you hear the boos. Number 33, James Dodd has it with an inside move. There's a foul called on number 33 as well. And Dad hits the second of two free throws. He hits them both, and, and now the Rams are down by 10 points. So there you see Robbie Green and Mark Allen once again in the backcourt. It's really astonishing to see the Rams down by anything, let alone 10 points. There's Neil Bell with a terrific inside move. Now the Rams are down by eight. It's still astonishing to see them down by just eight points. Uh, 
lost in, in the game. Uh, they beat North Rock on Saturday night. They lost a close, tough one. There's a steal by Phil Stillman. They're going to call a foul on Stillman. No, they're going to call a charging foul on the Vikings. And Stillman played excellent defense there. As I was saying, the Rams beat North Rock on Saturday night after rebounding from a tough loss to Mount Vernon on Friday night. Robbie Green was really dejected after that game. He played an outstanding game Saturday night. And tonight, he's really being all he can be. As you see the Ram crowd now, they're really going crazy. You see the hands up, that's a whoosh sign for Phil Simlin, who's shooting a foul shot right now. Simlin's shooting one. Watch, if he makes it, you'll hear a loud whoosh come through the crowd. Stillman, as he makes the first one, you heard the whoosh. He'll shoot a second one. The Rams are only down by seven points now. Stillman makes both of his foul shots, which is quite unusual. Phil hasn't been the greatest foul shooter this season, although he's played really tough inside. And I tell you, had an outstanding season for the Rams. There's Mariah with the ball. You hear the boost. And Robbie Green steals the ball. And this time he's going to throw it away. Not his fault, though. He's looking for a Ram player with a beautiful steal. Robbie really playing terrific defense. He's a quick player. And the Vikings are really ha have really got to watch out for him. There you see him playing man-to-man -man tight defense on Mariah, who takes a shot from the key. It's no good. Casey rips down the rebound. And he slows it up. That shows you the Ram experience. Dan Casey's been playing for us ever since he was a sophomore. And there's a foul on the Ram player, number 33, Jamie Dow. As I was saying, Dan Casey's been playing ever since he was a sophomore at the varsity level. And he's really one a heck of a player. Robbie Green and Mark Oliver moved up to the varsity level at the end of the sophomore years. And I think some of the some of the experience has really helped them. They've been playing terrific these past two seasons. Their junior season and now their senior season, they've got real all-county hopes. Casey at the foul line, he shoots the first one, it's no good. And the Vikings rip down the rebound. Guerrero. And the Rams don't get the rebound, and Kevin Hayes is a beautiful offensive rebound, puts it up for two more. The Rams have a minute 33 left in the first half, see what they can do, they're down by 10 points. You gotta watch the Rams perimeter shooting with Danny Casey, Paul Scano, and Mark Olo, all outside threats. Anytime they have the ball, it's a beautiful pass inside to Danny Casey, who converts it for two. And the Rams are now down by just eight points. Green playing half-court press defense on Therese. Therese isn't as quick as Mark Mariah, but there's a pass to Guerrero. It puts it in for two points. Guerrero has some deceiving quickness as well. Green's going to bring it up. You hear him listening to signals from Paul Toscano there. And Green takes the ball inside. He gives it to Scano with a long jump shot. It's good! And you hear the Ram fans really supporting the Ram players, which I think is a big deal in the Ram season so far. They've had a great deal of success, 13 and 4. Uh, that six Rams I mentioned before, they followed them everywhere. And when it's local, you can pretty much count on at least half of the Rams student body to be at the game. Some Clarkson North administrators are really look upset. And there's the half. Marco with a late jumper, it's no good anyway. So at the end of the first half, the Rams are down by eight points, and we'll get back to you after these words from our local sponsor. Okay, so with the, first, with the second half about to begin, the Rams are down by eight points, and here are some statistics from the first half. The Rams now Green has two points, Arlo with four, Toscano with six, Casey with two, Silman with four, and Lubell with two. Although the Rams are down by eight points, they've got really balanced scoring among the six players that have been in. And here's Mike Arlo, he's Mark's brother. We're gonna get a chance to interview him before the first half, uh, before the second half begins. Here's Mike. Mike, what do you think your brother's playing this season? Well, I think he's much improved in the second half of the year. I think he was a little tentative at the beginning of the year, but he's coming on real strong offensively in the second half. Last year, he didn't really handle the ball as much. This season, he's handled it a lot. Off the um, passes from Robbie Green, why do you think Mr. Scanner felt that way? Well, I think he realized that Mark, along with Robbie, has superior ball handling skills, and the two of them together make an excellent backcourt combination. He likes to use them 
both to utilize all of the potential that they have. And what do you think of the other Ram players as opposed to Mark on the team? Well, I, I wouldn't ra really want to compare the players to each other, but I just have to say that the entire Ram team has done, done a terrific job this year. They've played better than expectations. Uh, as I said, I'd like to add that, that I think this is the quarter we smoke them. Okay, there you go, Mike Arla, brother of Mark, who is had four points, second in the scoring for the Rams, along with Stillman to Paul Toscano, six points. Casey and Robbie Green leading the way for the Rams. Arla has the ball, he's gonna give it down to Stillman at baseline. Stillman looks inside, can't seem to find it well, he'll give it back to Green. There's Casey with an inside move, it's no good. Casey getting good tough D on him. Hastings, Hastings has it once again. No good, and Paul Scanner looks down the back. He gives it out to Arlo. Arlo with really terrific dribbling skills, but then he moves that up to Robbie Green, who's really also superior, and I believe uh, a little better than Arlo. Oh, Casey with a poor pass inside to Arlo. It's intercepted by Hastings. And you'll hear the Ram fans with some real excitement at that one. Here's Robbie Green on a fast break. It's two points for Green. Green has converted at least 90% of his fast breaks. He's really terrific on those fast break moves. There's Casey and Green locking their uh, legs, forming the L. Oh, there's South breaking the press. Adam Gray with another jump shot. This time it's in and out. Casey grabs the rebound, gives it to Green. Green over the midcourt line. Gives to Casey for a jump shot. Casey's no good. And the rebound between Stillman and Meyer. Meyer rips it down. Oh, gives it back to Green. Green at the point. Gives it to Toscano. Gives it back to Green. It moves inside. Gives it to Stillman. Stillman up for two. He's fouled. Oh, no call there. That was poor officiating on the part of the referees tonight. Hastings has the ball, moves inside, it's good. And the South Vikings are up now by 10 points. A beautiful move by Kevin Hastings. The Rams really must get something going. There's Paul Toscano on a move. It's good. And the crowd support is really going, going to help Toscano this season, for the rest of the season in the sectionals. Because a lot of the uh, North fans, including the six Ram, Leading those fans will travel to anywhere the Rams have to play. But Ernst is kind of down the rebound, gives it to Green. Green on a fast break, he'll slow it down, gives it to Stillman. And the ball stolen by Greg Meyer, number five. The ball taken back by Dan Casey, Casey to Arlo. Arlo slow things down, he'll fake a jump shot, gives it back to Green. Green's kind of, who will take a jump shot, it won't go. There's Stillman with a, Stillman with a beautiful rebound. And two points for the Rams. I can't explain that. Play by Phil Stillman, and he did it all himself. The Vikings comes back. Here's Greg Marr. There's a, it's not a foul, it's a walking call. And the Rams are down by just six points now. Thanks for your words, Pete. Cage takes the second, and he makes them both. The Rams now down by four points. This is the closest it's been all game. The Ram press really doing a terrific job. There's Robbie Green playing aggressive D. Hastings makes the move, gives it back to Ryan, but he was fouled there before. Uh, we're going to end the announcing for this quarter, at least. I'll be back at the beginning of the fourth quarter. I'm going to go up to the sixth ramp to where I really belong and check out what's happening up there. Thank you, Steve.
So the Rams now down by only five points. We're here in between the third and fourth quarter, just eight minutes left to go in the game. And the Rams have made this one a close one. We're interviewing a fan from the Rams section. Actually, he's the leader of the Ram fans, the leader of the sixth Ram, Harold Munchine. You see him leading the cheers right there. Here he is, Harold Munchine. Harold, what do you think of this game as opposed to the other games? Well, Scotty, <laughs> I'm trying to watch this right here. But let me tell you something. We are awesome, and we're coming back to win this game. As you saw right there, the Ram cheerleaders did a cheer that they do it almost every game, and the sixth Ram who's there gives them great support, but tonight they did it at both ends of the basket. They line up a half pyramid and dunk the ball. Both ends of the basket, they dunked it, and the Ram fans really came alive. So as I said, the Rams are down by five points. South team will have it out, and uh, we're gonna see what happens right now. We're in good shape, Scott. I think we're in good shape. Um, we spoke to Mike Arlo earlier to find out his analysis of the third period. Here's what he said. Well, it seems to be quite simple. The North has to keep up the hustle and the pressure defense. Got to hit the jump shots, and they started doing that at the end of the third. I think the tide can turn in their favor. Okay, thank you, Mike. There's Mark Mariah giving to Hastings to Meyer and back to Hastings, who gives it back to Mariah. Mariah running the point once again. And there's a South player with a good move inside, draws a foul, who have yet to see playing time. Last game, Jay Brand, who was put in the second quarter, much to the dismay of the crowd, was really, has really become the crowd favorite, put in four points with a nice move to the hoop last game, hasn't seen any action, and I think the crowd has really been a little displeased with that. So Green gives it to Arlo, back to Green and to Toscano. Toscano with a jump shot, it doesn't go, it's blocked. Clean block, and here comes Green with the ball. The ball's out on the South players, and North will take the ball back. So North only down by five points after Tommy Hine missed both free throws with 7.20 left to play. Arlo has the ball. He looks to pass to Casey. Casey to Green, and Green back to Arlo. Arlo is usually nice from that spot, but he doesn't want to shoot that shot right now. He wants to get the ball inside. There he goes with the shot. It's short, and Green will grab the rebound back. They're going to call it backcourt, but that call is questionable as the ball was touched by some South players after a shot. As you see, Coach Paul Toscano arguing with the call. Toscano is not going to argue any further short tonight, which is really surprising, as I've mentioned many times tonight, because the Rams usually take expert shots and... Uh, I've rarely seen a shot fall short. Ram, the Ram player is playing excellent defense. There's a steal by Arlo. Arlo grabs a rebound and gives it to Casey. Casey slows it down, and the Ram crowd comes alive. Green to Descano. Descano with a jump shot. It doesn't go. Stillman with a two points, and Stillman brings the Rams within three points. This is the closest the Rams have been this game. And the Vikings break the press. And there's Jimmy Dowd with two points. No, it's no good. And Danny Casey grabs the rebound. But there's a foul. This is the final quarter to play. The Ram fans all have their hands up for a whoosh. And Casey ices it. The Rams are down by one. Tough half for a press. Dan Casey has made his last four foul shots. He's really the nice Rams all year long. The Vikings miss easy lap, but then Greg Meyer grabs the rebound and puts it up again. Meyer has a load of points. As the Rams are now down by three points. There's Arlo with a missed jumper. There's a travel on Greg Meyer, as you can hear. On uh, Kevin Hastings, you can hear from the fans all around me, but no call there. Dowd with a terrible shot. Casey with the rebound, gives it out to Green. Green with two points, and you saw the beautiful fast break by Robbie Green. He executes that like nobody in the league. So Green brings the Rams to within one point, playing tough shadow defense on the Viking players. Mariah controlling the offense. He gives it to Adam Guerrero. 
as the Ram crowd once again comes alive. There's a shot by Greg Meyer off the side of the backboard. Casey brings it down by himself. There's two points by Casey. The Rams have the lead by one point, 42-41, for the first time in the game. The Ram fans are really coming alive tonight. Man, Adam Guerrero takes a jump shot. It's no good. Falls the scatter, rips down the rebound. And now the Rams, Robbie Green will slow it down with under four minutes left to play in the fourth quarter, up by one point. You hear the Rams fans chanting scoreboard in the background. Green gives it to Toscano. Back to Green. Green to Arlo. Arlo, Stillman, and Green now having a catch of sorts. Toscano now gets into the act. Green gives it to Stillman, doesn't see the ball, but a quick reaction gives it to Arlo. Back to Green, and now the Rams really look like, really looking like a terrific team. The team they were all this season. To Scano, back to Green. Green to Arlo, back to Scano, back to Green. Green, it's up to Casey. Oh, there's Stillman with a follow-up after getting three now he puts it in. The Rams up by three points. Now the Vikings seem to be getting a little nervous with just two minutes and 55 seconds left in the game. The Vikings miss their shot. And you hear the Ram fans chanting airball. And I tell you something, the Ram players who are on the sidelines who haven't gotten in for even a few seconds this game are giving their players all the support in the world. I haven't seen anything like this game in a bunch of years. Here we go once again. The Rams up by three points after Robbie Green showing an enormous amount of quality leadership for the Rams with just two minutes and 55 seconds left to play. Vikings, Greg Meyer has the ball, gives it out to Adam Guerrero. Neither of the players have been out the entire game. Meyer with a beautiful move to the hoop and one. So now the Rams up by just one point with Meyer going to the line. Which is quite unusual. Fred Brunswick has thrown a bunch of Ram fans out for chanting that. Now they're not their own home court. They can chant all they want. So Meyer ices the uh, foul shot, and the game is tied at 44 points apiece. Two and a half minutes left to play. Falls has got it with a jump shot. That's all next. So this guy puts the Rams up by two points. The Ram half-court pressure is really getting to the Viking players. Guerrero into Meyer, who gives it back to Mariah. Back to Guerrero and back to Meyer once again. Back to Mariah, who moves inside. It's no good. A tremendous block by Danny Casey there. Casey's hands on the elbow. It's rise for two points. And the Vikings are tied once again. This has really been an up and down game in the fourth quarter. The Rams, Robbie Green gives it to Arlo. Arlo hasn't shot much this game, but he's got, I believe, six or eight points. Green drives, gives it to Arlo, who shoots this time. It's no good, but Stillman with a rebound misses the spot. There's a foul call on Mark Arlo. And you really can't blame anyone on that one. As Bill Stillman's been doing it the entire game, grabbing the rebound and putting it right back up for the Rams. A veteran player compared to other players on the team. Eight, 17, 18 years old is a young kid compared to anybody else by any other standard. He hits both the foul shots and the whole team Vikings are up by two points. Now the Rams have the ball. Let's see what Robbie Green can direct here. Gives it to Toscano, back to Green. Toscano with a jump shot, it's no good. Yes, it is good. That ball was short, hit the front of the rim and went in. The Rams are tied with a minute six to play. And there's a foul call on Robbie Green there. Questionable, Green arguing, but not much as he knows you can't win versus the refs. So it's tied with Greg Meyer, I believe, going to the line once again. It's 48-48, a minute four left to play. We'll be right back after these messages from your local Getty dealer. Hi again from Clarkstown South Stadium. Scott Greenberg here. Greg Meyer at the line. He hits it again. 
He's hit three in a row foul shots. And Steve, what can you say about this kid? He's hit him when it counts. The Vikings are now up by once, one again. Meyer about to take the second of two free throws. The Ram fans have really been quieted. He's hit four in a row. The Vikings now up by two points. We have no idea how many points he has, but I'll tell you one thing, he's really the leader physically and spiritually of this Viking team. So Green uses the scatter for another jump shot. This time it's no good. Case with the rebound, two points. It's good and a foul. Yes, and it counts. The Rams and Vikings tied up at 50 with just 47 seconds left to play. What a game. Tremendous pressure once again as Meyer was. I'd really compare the two as they're both leaders of the team. Casey doesn't make the one, but it's waved off anyhow as there was a lane violation on number 22, Paul Toscano. So the game tied at 50. Under 50 seconds left to play. Let's see what Coach Morty Pacinich's strategy is right here. Ramp players playing tough D as they get it out to Adam Guillermo, who drives right side, gives it to Jamie Dowd, back to Mariah, who's just in between the half court. For the last shot. Yes, Steve, I think you're right. The Vikings are probably going to hold for the last shot. Under 30 seconds left to play right now. Hastings gives it to Mariah, who gives it back to Hastings. Mariah now has the ball. Guillermo's wide open. He gives it to Guillermo. Guillermo doesn't take the shot, but gives it back to Hastings. Back to Guillermo with another open shot, but doesn't step in. Mariah has the ball. Good court awareness. Call side out with just 14 seconds left to play. The score still tied. As you see some fans there leaving the gym, they're just about the only three fans in the whole gym that are leaving now with the score tied. 14 seconds left to go. I can't believe anybody would leave a packed gym with a cliffhanger such as this. And you can't say enough about the Rams seniors and the juniors. As we get back to the game with under 10 seconds left to play, Vikings have the ball. Mariah gives it to Hastings. Who gives it to Meyer? Meyer drives, puts up the shot, it's good! And there's no time on the clock. But the Rams have tried to call a timeout. Let's see what happens. With one second left there the should be at least a second left on the clock. Who knows what could happen? Dan Casey once hit a winner with no time on the clock at Alberta's match in the Christmas tournament. The fans are pouring out of the court. Let's see what the referees do. And they are going to pull all the players off the court for the time being. And there is a second on the court, as you see there. Dave Sergio. Uh, you see Sergio cheering on his team with Ken Mahoney there. I tell you, the Rams fans, you can't say enough about them. There's the inbound pass to Casey, who shoots it. It's not going to be good. It's going to fall short, and the Vikings win 52-50. For Scott Greenberg, Steve McCready, this is WSGB signing off. tradition of Ram basketball alive. As a tribute to their success, the Booster Club would like to present each player and Coach Descano with a gift to remember this season. With each player, as your name is called, please come on court to receive your gifts. Jason Brand. Sean Red Green. Dave 
Lincoln's Ridge. Jeff Meskin. Dean Copper. Mark Otto. Danny Casey. Robbie Green.
I'm going to the sectionals. If you want to go, go on. Do you want to go? All right. Well, I'll make sure I get you when you go. Go, Robbie, go, go, Robbie, go, Robbie, go, 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 Six minutes left in the third quarter. Mounties up by two points. The, this Ram basketball team can't seem to get anything going here. They've been extremely flat in the past five games with only one win coming towards North Rockland on Saturday night. Arlo with the jump shot. It's good off the glass. That was pure finesse. No, sir. And there's a nice defensive play by Stillman. Finish off by Arlo, who brings the ball past midcourt. Arlo and Danny Casey, two on two. Casey slows it down. Casey with a jump shot. No, it changes his mind. Pass to Arlo. To scanner now for two. It's no good, and that's his first miss in a long while. Casey with the follow-up, and the Rams now have their first lead of the game, 32-30. Toscano's been extremely hot towards the end of the first half. And the Rams running their trap defense. Casey with the steal, no good It's the layup, and Orlo follows up with two points. Rams now up by four, and they seem to be coming alive. The Rams running that press, which has been extremely successful tonight. And there's a foul call on Robbie Green. A lot of the fans here don't, don't agree with that one at all. So there's a suffering timeout, and uh, they're down by four points now. 4.53 left to play in the third. Team. Talk. But, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. And, <laughs> so the Rams starters come out. Robbie Green, Mark Arlo at the top with Dan Casey, Paul Scano, and Phil Stillman playing down low. All, all seniors. And for Suffern, it's Bob Byman, Sean Metkowski, David Barbadell, and Joe Alexander along with number 24, Jim McDonough. And Stillman rips down the rebound, gives the outlet pass to Green. Green slows it down but gives to Casey for a jump shot. It's short. And there's Alexander with the rebound, and he's 
Gets a tough fight out of that one. Stillman who rips it down. Arlo with the jump shot. It's no good. Arlo going for his own rebound, but there's a foul called on number 21 of Suffering Joe Alexander. And disgusted with that call as he thought Stillman fouled him earlier. So Green makes a move inside, but gives it to the elbow for Mark Arlo, who's short again. Arlo's been off all night. But, uh, you know, he's, he's had this problem before, but he's come right back in the second half or fourth quarter. And he's, he really keeps his head up. He's a player. And there's Paul Scanner with the rebound. Gives it out to Green. Green is still running two on two. Green with a move inside. He gets the foul. And he'll go to the line for two. I tell you, Green seems to work well with all of his teammates as a point guard and the floor general. He barks out signals, and the players on the North team really respect him. And the cheers you heard before that were for one of the North cheerleaders who did some acrobatics over on the sideline, but Green did make his first, and the Rams are now up by five points. Green converts both free throws. Rams up 36-30. It doesn't go, though. Green with the rebound. Green fast breaks it up court, but he'll slow it down, give it to Casey at the, at the foul line for a jumper. It doesn't go. And there's just kind of with a strong rebound, but they're going to get it over the back call on that one. Now it's McDonough who makes a move. It's no good, and Toscano grabs another bound. Toscano calling for Green to slow it down as the Mounties have missed their last few shots. Arlo with a beautiful move to the hoop, and it goes! Arlo was fouled, and he made a beautiful move to the hoop. It counts, and the fans love him here. He's a real crowd pleaser. You see some of the fans standing there. A lot of the fans, as a matter of fact, as I was there before, we gave all the seniors uh, standing O at the beginning of the game. We have a, we have a fan going overboard. <laughs> yeah, we're going to kick that. Paulo does not make the free throw, and the Rams now have an eight-point lead. As, as you see, some of the fans, they just can't seem to get into the game, which really takes away from the um, Ram basketball game. The uh, sixth Ram isn't alive and well usually uh, today, but usually they come out in great number. And Alexander misses his first shot. So now Green, the floor general, directs the Ram offense. He gives it to Arlo. Arlo looking to go inside, but instead gives it to the elbow to Paul Toscano, who gives back to the other side to Casey. Casey for two points. And the Rams have really come out alive and singing in the second half. And there's that press that they use so well. Suffern has the ball. They go baseline. Inside to Barbadell with a beautiful pass from Joe McDonough. I tell you, we're having some fun up here in the crowd. And Paul Descano, who's got to have close to or at least 20 plus points in this game. He had 16 in the first half, 12 of the last 14 Ram points for the second quarter. Byman looking baseline, he shot. It's no good. Stillman rebound. Sends an outlet pass to Sully, who intercepted that one. But he gives it to Casey, who goes down low to Green. It's stolen by Barbadell. And the Mounties play tough D there. And Barbadell with a jump shot. That's good. That brings the Mounties to within five. And let me sit corrected, because I'm not really how sure the uh, Suffern JV or freshman teams are doing. What I really meant to say was that the Suffern team shouldn't be underestimated, as they're a pretty good ball club. There's Casey with a jump shot that's no good. And there's 21 number Joe Alexander grabs the rebound. Bosco just playing catch. Bosco gives it inside to Alexander. Five seconds left for glass. It's no good. And oh, what a beautiful play by Suffern number 24, Jim McDonough who puts it back up, but it's no good. And there's the scoreboard for the end of the third quarter. Okay. Oops. <laughs> and here come the five Rams starters once again. Robbie Green, Mark Arlo, Phil Stillman, Paul Scano, and Bill Sullivan has come into the game for Dan Casey. There's Green on Billy Bosco, and these two have a rivalry going since the first game that they played at Suffern earlier in the season. There's the scanner now, one of the elbows, gives to Sullivan. You know, I spoke to Arlo earlier in the day 
I had lunch with him, and he is a class individual, both on and off the court. <laughs> There's Green playing tough jab and retreat defense. And uh, now it's going to be Jim McDonough with a jump shot. It's no good. Stillman rips down the rebound, but he's almost fouled there, and Arlo's going to come out with it. Earlier in the game, Jason Moto Brand came in, and uh, he really did the job for the Rams, I believe, as Coach Boltzcano asked him to do. He, uh, he fit in well with the other seniors. He was the only junior who's been on the court today, as well as versus North Rockland Saturday night. He came in at North Rockland and scored four quick points, was taking out from there. But uh, I really believe he's going to be a great player to come in the upcoming year. He makes them both, and the Rams are now out by seven. Mark had some trouble free throw shooting in the game versus North Rock on Saturday night. And what's funny about that, I was watching his brother give him some messages, and uh, Mark turned, saw him, did what his brother was telling him, and it worked. He hit both free throws that night. Joe, what's that? Alexander misses the first front end of his one and one, but Barbara gets the rebound, misses the layup. There's a foul call on, I believe, number 22, Billy Byman, Bobby Byman. A beautiful pass, and he converts it. So now Green brings the ball up for the Rams, who are now up by five. The lead's been changing between five and seven points for the Rams. Lubell really looks disgusted over the sidelines. He really wants some PT. Green and Sully now playing up top with Arlo down low by baseline. Gives it back up to Green. Arlo with a long jump shot, it's good! And Mark Arlo, who's now suddenly caught fire. And over there in the corner, you see Thomas Jauntig the third, the ball boy for the Rams. And who knows, maybe he'll be another Dan Casey or Mark Arlo or Paul Toscano in the upcoming years. And Toscano in the game for Sully. Excuse me, Dan Casey in the game for Sully. So it's now the Ram five starters who started the beginning of the game and Green had a shot from the block, but he didn't take it. Arlo gives back to Green. And Green and Arlo just playing catch. The crowd is quiet. And Toscano will take a jump shot from the end and it's good. Paul Toscano has been on fire here at the zoo. The affectionate nickname for the Rams home court. Bosco makes both, and his team is now within seven points, with just five and a half minutes left to play in the fourth. Look for Neil Lubell to come in towards the end to help out the big man underneath. There's a beautiful pass from Casey to Toscano, driving the lane, and it was no good, but he drew the foul for the Mounties. Toscano makes the front end of his two shots. And you can't say enough about the Rams seniors this season. They've really showed direction and leadership for their juniors and just all the other players on the team. I tell you, Coach Toscano must be pleased with their performance this season. And Toscano makes the second of his two foul shots and he's gotta have a season high tonight. So Suffering's Jim McDonough drives the lane and he gets two points. And Adam Protovsky over on the bench, you know, he's a really great kid, Jack. I believe he, I honestly believe he should get some playing time. He's a senior, and not only for that reason, I've seen him play some basketball, and uh, he's really a, he's an all-around team player. The crowd was just chanting, if you heard them yelling, Protovsky, Protovsky. <laughs> so uh, listen for that next time, because I'm sure you'll hear it again. And there's going to be a foul on number 10, Dan Casey. As I was saying, as much as they love to see Jason Brand in the game, and they do, I really think that they'd love to see Neil Lubell and Scott Levy get some playing time as they are both seniors. So now the Matthews to within six as Green pushes the ball up the floor, and now the Matthews pressing. 
Green and Arlo putting on a dribbling exhibition. Green gets the ball to Arlo, gets it to Stillman and to Toscano for two easy points. Toscano's been scoring from all over tonight. Drives, layups, outside shots. He does it all. And there you hear an Adam chant from the crowd. They really want to see Adam Tovsky. Toscano pushes it up the floor to Green. He's got the ball stolen there from Billy Byman. And there's going to be a call, a walking call on Byman. And the Rams will retain possession once again. Hello. Will most likely be on ends of the court to try to keep it away from the suffering press. And there's Casey with a move to the hoop. It doesn't go. And there's Suffern with a move to the hoop by Billy Bosco. It doesn't go. And there's Casey who now brings it out after the rebound. And there's going to be a technical on one of the Mountie players. It's on the bench. As they were yelling pretty loudly, you see the dejected looks on their faces. There's not much you can do. This is what the Ram team does so well. They frustrate the other players, not only on the court, but on the bench as well. As you hear the Adam chants from the crowd once again. And who else to take the foul shot but Paul Toscano, who's been ice hot all night. So Toscano makes the first. I don't know, I think he called two technicals. And Scano converts them both. Toscano, the crowd doesn't phase him one bit. He means all business once he steps on the court at North. Or any gymnasium for that matter. And there's Arlo back on his own end and Billy Byman took a swipe at him twice. And Arlo just walks away. He's a very cool-headed man. Well, let me say this. He's cool-headed tonight, but I've seen him when tempers were flaring. I wouldn't want to be next to him. So Arlo will now shoot the one and one. And you hear the continuous we want Adam shots from the crowd and Bertowski. So Arlo misses the front of his one-on-one, -on -one, but Paul Toscano grabs the rebound and puts up two more quick points. And it's all Paul Toscano tonight here at the zoo. Toscano, he steps on the end line. Alexander really is some kind of a player. He plays down low and outside. So Green, being the general he is, calls a timeout with the Rams up by eight points with 2.56 left to play. You see the, ch you see the crowd chanting at him, and there's a close-up of a couple of players. And... They're not, they're not players. Uh, excuse me, I stand corrected. You are right, Steve McCready, they are fans. Cheers. And here we go with the Ram cheerleaders. What an addition to this gymnasium. They really make it colorful. And those carnations really look like something. Giving by the Booster Club, I believe. With just under three left in the fourth quarter, I can barely hear myself think. And there you see some suffering cheerleaders. You decide for yourself. Do you think they're awesome? <laughs> That's the question of the day. Do you think they are awesome? Right and you can call in. You can call in 1-900-555-6565 if you do. 1-900-555-6566 if you don't. The telephone company will charge you 50 cents per call. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get you the results of that one. <laughs> and now the Rams are playing give and take with their own players. There's a beautiful pass by Green to Casey who puts it up for two points. And that sort of must make the Mountie, fan, the Mountie players feel like nothing after they just threw the ball away. It's all north. This is Ram basketball for you. And here come the suffering cheerleaders. Once again, you can get a second look. Are they awesome? The number to call once again is one 900 Six five six five. If you think they're awesome, one nine hundred five 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 six five six six. If you don't think they're awesome, we're waiting for those calls. It's a close. No, ex excuse me. It's not a close one. So far, they're getting shut out. We're not going to say which way the uh, the vote is going, but it's a healthy three hundred and twenty-six to nothing so far. 
Many callers calling in. The phone, li the phone lines are jammed here at the zoo in Clarkstown North. And what cheerleaders? Let's give them a hand. Oh, the fans going crazy. Well, we think we're going to get a report on that. We think there was some artificial noise brought in by the suffering fans. A few there are. And you hear Dave Hornig over in the Ram crowd barking out some uh, some letters. He's asking for an R A M S. And you hear the fans spelling it out for him. And there's Paul Toscano patiently bringing up the ball. <laughs> and there's Bill Bosco with an opportunity for two. It doesn't go on Miss Lamp, and that's been the story all second half for the Mounties. And there's a fight breaking out. Bosco throws punches at Phil Stillman, which in my book is a death wish. Stillman probably would have put that kid through this planet and any other. Here comes Adam Protovsky in, and Paul Toscano grabbing Bosco, I think just saved his life. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near Phil Stillman when his temper is flaring. He's one hell of a kid. And here comes Pertovsky in. And Pertovsky's coming in. The standing O from the crowd. You see the standing O from the crowd. They're going, they're going crazy. The crowd's going crazy. Oh my God, the crowd's going crazy for Pertovsky. As you see Munchine and the rest of his fans. I see a close-up on Harold Munchine. Bosco is down. There's a close-up on Harold Munchine. There, he's the leader of the sixth Ram. You know, let me tell you, the Ram players, the Ram fans all support the Ram school. And I tell you, no one wants a fight here. They just want good, clean basketball. And for some reason, the Mounties, number 24, his name is Jim McDonough, is taking a foul shot. I believe it's a technical. He makes it. I don't know why he gets four. Though. He's getting four technical free throws. And this, we don't know what's going on. He makes another. And the Rams are now up by just seven. We're going to try to get... I thought it was two and two. We're going to try to get an explanation uh, from the crowd on why they were shooting so much. Bosco threw it at Stillman. And here comes Paul Toscano to shoot for the Rams. Toscano misses the first, which is so surprising. And he just got a rebound. We just got a rebound. It's Mike Lemolino. And the Rams are up by seven points. They're going to play some quarters. Bertowski got the rebound. Bertowski with an assist to Danny Casey. So Adam Bertowski playing Ram basketball. And there's a steal by Casey, but it's knocked out of bounds, and it's going to be Mounty Ball. So Adam Protovsky, the clear fan favorite tonight, and he's getting a chance to show what he's got. And what he's got is one hell of a lot. And there are some Mounty fans sitting right below us who are very displeased with my brand of announcing because uh, they feel I'm plugging north too much. Well, let me tell you something, girls. It's not your tape. Thank you, Steve McCready. If you didn't hear that, it's not your tape. And Casey gives to Green. Green now dribbling circles around the Mounty defense. He makes these guys look silly. Green into Casey, into Toscano. Toscano for two more. We have no idea how many he has. I don't know if we can count that high. Paul Toscano is on fire tonight. So the Mounties grab their own rebound. They don't get it. Pertowski grabs another rebound. So Pertowski with his second rebound of the game is going to go to the free throw line. And the fans here in North really love Pertowski. So Mark Rollo gets a standing as He comes off the court. Excuse me, the Mounties cheerleaders. And here comes David Curley Linton into the game for the Rams along with I believe Jeff Meskin, yes, coming in for Paul Toscano and Green. All four players getting ovations from the crowd. Barbadell drives baseline. He's going to be fouled there. And I tell you, Dan Casey's done a wonderful job, as have every single one of the Ram players. This is their last home game, and they really deserve all the wins they've gotten. And uh, what else is terrific about this crowd is that they support every each and every one of the Ram players, whether regardless of whether or not they know them or not. Off the court, that is. And Coach Paul Toscano is very upset with his players now, as they're only up by seven points. Let's see if he's going to keep them in the game. 
as you see him bury his ha head in his hands. Not really a bury, I should say just a, a placement. He placed his face in his hands there. I tell you, and I also, I've been plugging the Ram players. Coach Paul Scano has done a terrific job here in North over the years. He's been here, he's been here several years. Several years. No idea. He's had a lot of winning seasons. The further broadcast of this telecast without written consent by Zoo Broadcast is prohibited by law. Time. Sally Matthews will try to make it a closer one, but to no avail. The Matthews players are disgusted with that call by the official who calls it out on them, but there's really no reason. They're down by five. They're going to lose this game no matter what. And there's a technical, a needless technical, on one of the Mountie players. Oh, here's Adam Potofsky shooting the technical. As I just noticed, Jay Brand, it must feel good for him to watch the other guys get a chance to play, himself not being one of those, one of those players. He got playing time early in the game. It was very quality playing time. He's gonna shoot another one, and he makes it. But I don't know if it's gonna count. We're sorry, Adam. He just hit that one, and we don't know what's going on. We're trying to yell to the officials, but they're not going to listen. Maybe we'll come over and look at the uh, video. We're going we're gonna to get an instant replay of that one, and in just a second, we'll see what happens. After further review of the play, the play stands as called. It does not count. So there's Adam Rodowski shooting another one. In your face, Mr. Referee, this one goes. So for Steve McCready and all the people here at Zoo Stadium in Parkside North, this is Scott Greenberg saying good night. So long, we'll see you in the sectionals. Wait, what about the phone in uh, Paul? And we'll get those phone results at the sectionals if we get a chance. I'll see you there.